Now circle proofs are no different than all of the other proofs that we've taken a look at so far. So we're going to take and apply some of those circle theorems that we've learned so far um, within this unit and apply those to a proof. So within this proof it says we have diameter AB, we have AD, so this segment congruent to segment FB. Let's mark those congruent. We have CD perpendicular to AB and EF also perpendicular to AB. Now in every circle we know that all radii are congruent. So I'm just going to note that radii OE, OC, OD, and OB are all congruent. So that's going to be my step two. So once again, that's OC is congruent to OA, which is then congruent to OE, and then OB. For the reason, all radii. are congruent. Okay, now looking back at my diagram, we can now use the subtraction property because if OA and OB are congruent, so here's OA, OB, and then we know this little segment AD is congruent to FB. By subtraction, we then know that OD is congruent to OF. So OD is congruent to OF by the subtraction property. Okay, so right now in these triangles, we have two sides congruent. And I didn't mark it with the tick marks, uh, the radii, but so now I'm going to go ahead and mark the radii OC congruent to radii OE. So we have two sides. So that could be side angle side, it could be side 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 or hypotenuse leg. And remember, with hypotenuse leg, um, in order to have a hypotenuse and leg, we need to have a right triangle. So do we have a right triangle? And the answer is yes. And it's because we have some perpendicular segments which give us right angles. So I'm going to note that angle 1 right here is a right angle because CD is perpendicular to AB. And then also number 2, EF is perpendicular to AB. So step four is that angle one and angle two are right angles. The same reason we've been using all year is that perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. Okay, so going up, um, we have a right angle, and all right angles are congruent, but the angle for SAS is not included between those two congruent sides. So are the two sides that are congruent a hypotenuse and leg? Yes, they are. So before we can use hypotenuse leg, we need to state that the two triangles are indeed right triangles. So that's going to be step five. 
So that's triangle. I'm going to say CDO and triangle EFO. are right triangles. And that's because a right triangle has one right angle. OK, so now step six, we can state that the two triangles are congruent. So CDO is congruent to triangle EFO by hypotenuse leg. Okay, so now that those two triangles are congruent, how do we get arc AC congruent to arc EB? So I'm going to highlight those two arcs. So here's arc AC, which if you follow along, goes with this central angle COA. And then arc EB, following along the two rays that intercept that arc, um, is intercepted by angle EOB. If those two angles are congruent, we learned today, then the arcs are congruent because congruent central angles intercept congruent arcs. And those two angles are congruent, so let's put a, let's grab the purple. I'm going to put a 3 here. I didn't grab, no, it's on purple. Put a 3 here and a 4 there. Those two angles are congruent by CPCTC. So number 7, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 by CPCTC. And then we're done eight. We now have arc AC congruent to arc EB. So remember to put that curve above AC. So arc AC is congruent to arc, was it EB? Yes. So arc EB. And you can word this a variety of different ways. Um, if you're ever stuck, again, I would always encourage that if then. So if um, two central angles are congruent, then the arcs that are intercepted by these angles are congruent. And that's that.